the life you're living now of the wealth, that's like the new norm to you, right? I'm trying not to let it feel normal mm -hmm. and I'm trying to stay humble, but it's very difficult to, it's very difficult to keep your mind switched on like it used to be 10 years ago in regards to the price of things. I don't know how much bread and milk are and various yeah, yeah. things like this. Or, um, you know, when you spend money or when you buy a new car, the feeling of excitement isn't quite there like your first ever supercar. And I try my very best to think like the old Tristan. How would I feel at 19 mm. if I had just booked this 140 grand private jet flight to Miami? How would I feel? But you, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you become slightly numb to it. Yeah. It is normal. See, this, it what is normal. this is what I'm thinking because when you're linking up with these people from your, your past days, does it make you think, yeah, man, I miss the brokey days. I miss the life where you don't have to really care so much about this or that, but, and you have those people around you just hanging around them. Well, the thing is, I still have those people around me. Um, most of my friends who I have, I've known for 15, 20 years. Mm. And I, I still speak to the same people. I mean, uh, Rory, a lot of you know, Marcel, a lot of you know, if you watch any of my content online, mm -hmm. you know, I hang around with the same people I've known forever. So no, I don't ever miss the brokey days, but speaking about them with my old friends makes me appreciate what I have now. Yeah, that fair. Yeah. Way. So where did you go from there, Tristan? From working at the, so we go from the sandwich shop to selling television commercials on, uh, on the phone. Well, that business, there was a small venture where my brother and a, another senior salesman at that company decided to start their own venture selling TV advertising because the boss ran it very badly, to be, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And I was working for them for a while, but that business ended up falling into nothing. I mean, we have my brother. He's probably, what, 20 years old at the time. Yep. First ever business he's run. The other guy, you know, probably 25, 26 at the time, but, but very irresponsible. And the business ended up collapsing and falling apart because television advertising died. I think that... What year is this? This is... So I must have been 21, so maybe 14 years ago. So 2010. 10, yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough, yeah. So the, the, the problem was, I think, I, that would be an impossible business to run nowadays. Mm -hmm. To call people and try to convince them to spend 20, 30, 40 grand on to TV. advertise on television, yeah, forget they'd it. be like, well, I can get my niece to make a TikTok video and try and make it go viral. Yep. And the internet has killed television advertising. Only the biggest of the biggest companies now do it. So there's no more medium-sized companies aspiring to do it. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking of selling TV advertising or starting that as a business, good luck to you. But I think yep. today it would be very difficult. Very and difficult. it started failing around 2010. I worked a myriad of various sales jobs um, from selling windows to home improvements. Uh, I actually made a lot of money when conservatory insulation first kicked off. So conservatories are either too hot or too cold and people were insulating the ceilings. And I worked for a company in Milton Keynes with a guy who actually my former boss used to know, the former television advertising boss used to know named Andy. And he ran this, this ragtag outfit of random salespeople from all sorts of backgrounds mm -hmm. to go around, rent, knock on doors, cold call, anything you could do to drag clients in any house with a conservatory. So I used to go out on rainy days or super hot sunny days or super cold days and leaflet houses in, in nice areas like, like Radlett, like Hitchin, like the, the areas close yeah, to Luton. Yeah where people had conservatories in their houses and I'd, I'd follow up on the leads and stuff. And I was the top salesman at the company. Selling white gold. Yeah, and yeah. I, was, I was 22, 23 and I was, I was selling, I was making for myself well over a thousand pounds a week, which, which isn't bad, especially 10 years ago. Remember, a thousand pounds a week was a lot very, of money. It was a lot of money. And that was my first taste of ever actually having money. Mm. And when I mean having money, it means, which is crazy because my, my threshold on having money is very low because I've been very broke. Having money at 23 meant to me that when I went to the supermarket, I could get anything I liked. Mm. That, that was wild. Yeah, you, like, you have to think twice like, about exactly. it. It's like, oh, pot noodles. Yeah, I can afford these. Yeah. Oh, a jar of olives that costs five pounds because they've got cheese in them. Okay, I can buy those. You could just buy whatever you liked from the supermarket. Yeah. That was mind blowing. That was mind blowing. And that was, uh, yeah, that was my conservatory insulation sales job. But that was, I mean, I made very good money. And again, you learn a lot of very difficult lessons. You have the door slammed in your face. You have people answer the door with their dog barking at you. <laughs> what do you want? And you're like, uh, hello, sir. Well, I've noticed you have a conservatory that, and you're trying to pitch them. It's, it's very difficult. And I think the internet has killed that. I think that every single year for the last probably 100 years up until 2010, salesmen got better and better and stronger and the science was refined and the science of sales was perfected. And I think now it's gotten worse. I feel like the younger generation aren't built 
to walk around in the rain and knock on doors and try to hustle money out of selling conservatory insulation or windows. Windows, so, are, windows are hard <clears> to sell, bro. Everyone has windows. Yeah. Houses all have windows, and you have to knock on the door and convince him to get rid to, of his old yeah, ones and put the new ones and in. Buy it's new funny windows. because there was a Netflix series called White Gold, which mm -hmm. is why I said it. it's called White Gold, right? And it was all on the idea of these sales guys' comedy show mm -hmm. selling PVC. But the fact that they're basically just trying to sell this PVC as much as possible, yeah. telling these cust these people to get rid of their old one for no apparent reason yes. to get the new one in. That's exactly what I do. Like that's a product there where that's you have some you have to just learn to sell it properly. Yeah. And, and nowadays yeah. you have youngsters that are just like, oh well, sales is hard. You know, I sent a bunch of cold emails, I didn't get a reply. Cold email mm. is hard. You think copying and pasting and sending is yeah, hard? Yeah, literally just putting. You don't on know what hard is. Just, try yeah. try dialing them on the phone. Yeah, you probably have a lot more success. How do you do with negotiations? Um, so nego not negotiations, uh, rejections. Rejections. I've always dealt with rejections very, very well. I was very pragmatic. When I got a no, I obviously store the number, store the lead, call them back next week just to see if it was a it was a final no. I had a very organized system, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, a key to mine lender success. We're very organized people. He's probably more organized than me. He calls me disorganized, even though I'm 10 times more organized than the normal person because he's slightly more organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, quite annoying. But um, yeah, I was, I was extremely organized. I was extremely polite. I was very polite with rejections. And I'm, I've been polite with rejections in every single way my entire life, which is the best way to be. Woman rejects you, be polite. Sales customer rejects you, be polite. Be polite always. I, manners gets you, you know, very, very far. And a lot of the customers who then maybe change their minds called me back because I was such a pleasant at the time young man, mm. and they they liked me and they you know they had the, I built some rapport with them. So no, when you get rejected in anything in life, say you go for a job interview and you get rejected, always behave like a gentleman and always behave uh, amicably because it will eventually, if you live long enough, backfire if you start treating rejection badly. So I've always been fine with rejection. Don't bother me. At this point, then. Andrew being two years older than you, where is he financially? So at the time, broke is the answer. But um, <laughs> <laughs> short answer, broke. Long answer, he was actually making money kickboxing. I was kickboxing a bit, training a bit, fighting for five, six hundred pounds a fight. He was actually making three, four, five, ten grand a fight. So he was making some, I call that broke, but it, you know. In, in looking, the grand scheme of things, Looking yeah. back, yeah. It, it was broke. We still lived in a rented two bedroom apartment back then. But yeah, he was kickboxing. I was working the job. So if he didn't have any fights because of my job, the rent was always paid. But then when he was winning fights, we could go on vacation and buy nicer things. Mm. So we've always, you know, worked together and pooled our resources together. We've never thought of ourselves as, as separate entities. Yeah, Fizz. So would you say <clears throat> you still have the sales? You, you would... <clears throat> One second, sorry. My voice cracked. You need a cigar. It helps, it helps the... Uh, I'm gonna Words get to flow this. smoother. I'm gonna get to this. Watch. Work, works for me. I'm gonna get to this. Would you say you still have the sales skills in you? One hundred percent. Yeah. If I went broke tomorrow, the the problem is because I'm famous. The Tate brand in and of itself is worth so much. I couldn't go broke. If I went broke, I could make the money back somehow. Yeah. But I could start selling cigars or ties or something. Yeah. So if I told you right now, sell me this cigar, putting you on the spot. You're putting me on the spot to sell you this cigar. Yep. Okay, what's your experience with cigars? Do you like cigars? Sometimes they can get to my throat a bit and then uh, end up coughing or something like well, that. Well, that's your but problem. That's because you've been buying the lower quality cigars. What's your typical budget when you purchase each stick? Mm, I think the most I've spent on a cigar is probably about 200 pounds. See, well, that's your problem right there because this cigar actually costs $350 per cigar and the way that the tobacco is aged before they roll it is the key. The smoothness of the cigar comes not when you make it, not when you roll it, not when you put the label on it, but it's the process after picking the tobacco to, di to drying it, flavoring it, spicing it, and aging it. And that's where the smoothness comes in, like a fine whiskey or a fine cognac. So what you need to do is smoke fewer cigars per week. Don't go for three or four at 100, 200 bucks each. Just treat yourself every Friday night to one of these. This is truly exceptional. The coughing will stop. The smoothness will be there. You'll notice a, f a greater enjoyment from your cigar experience than you've ever enjoyed before. It's three hundred fifty dollars. Do you want this? Uh, I don't know, Justin. Three hundred fifty dollars seems a bit out of my budget, man. Well, you know what? If you can't afford it, that's perfectly fine because I have customers who can. And things like this, they don't stay on the market for very long. So this is definitely going to go if I put it in the humidor at the cigar store. So if you don't want to buy it, it's no problem for me, and you could stick to what you have and keep coughing. Gears have got me right there. Light the cigar up. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just want to, while you lit your cigar, I just want to talk about that quickly as well, right? That cigar, that lighter you got right there. Yes. Talk to me about it because we'll talk about it off camera and I was like, nah, this is crazy. This is an uh, ST DuPont uh, roulette complication lighter. Cost me $55,000. It's uh, one of the jewels of my lighter collection. I think I just made a full mess of that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. And you cut it badly, but it's okay. It's all right. We're trying, we're trying. You cut it. See, I can I, your inexperience is showing just inexperience, there. Inexperience, yeah. We're no inexperienced with this one, yeah. So this cool. has a roulette complication in it. It's got rubies. It's made by uh, Tisset, the watch manufacturer, the mechanism inside. It's made out of white gold. Yep. And has a flame to light your cigars with. So now ask me to sell you this lighter. Go on. Not worth it. Can't do it. Really? Nope. Be super rich and be super extravagant. And maybe you'll buy it because you're insane like me. But yeah. there's no way I could convince you to buy this lighter. But why would you justify spending that much money on a lighter? I get that you smoke cigars and you like cigars. Yeah. But smoking that much money on it Roll is the insane. Top. Roll the top towards you. Oh, towards me, yeah? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Why would I buy that lighter? Because I like it. You know, when I, was, when I was young and poor, I'm going to explain this. When I was young and poor, I used to see people buy very expensive things. And I would think of all the things I could buy instead. You have to keep it in your mouth while you light it. And there we go, until the whole end is glowing red. Smoother than your other cigars, right? There we it go. Is, you know what? It. This one's on the house. I'm not going to charge you the 350 <laughs> bucks. No problem. Close it. Yep, just close yeah. it. So lighters like this, I mean, I used to see rich people buy things like that. And if I was broke, if you were to, if I was 19 and you were to put me in front of a person who bought a $55,000 lighter, I'd be like, oh, $55,000, that's crazy. Yeah. I'd upgrade my car. I'd buy a new bed. I'd rent a bigger apartment. I'd do all these things with 55 grand. That's a waste. What should I have done with the money instead? Me. I already run a massive charity. I already give loads away. I already feed kids all over the world. I already have everything I want. Why not have that lighter? Mm. It's, it becomes a matter of why not. You know, why would you buy a Zippo for $50 as opposed to a 50 cent lighter for this plastic that does the same thing? Why? It looks slightly cooler. Does it do anything different? No. It's harder to fill up. It's more hassle. You'd be more annoyed if you lost it. Well, that's that. However, to me, $55,000 is probably very similar to $50 to a lot of people out there who own the Zippos. So it's you, no different. You know, as compared to a watch here, would you say this is almost like a great conversation starter? If you're in the club or something like that with another entrepreneur on the same level of wealth, he asks for a lighter and he picks this up and he's like, yo. It can be with the right people. And it's not necessarily the way it looks, it's the way it sounds. If you're in a cigar lounge and you hear that, mm. That ping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you, just sounds like money. You know it's a DuPont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's from this brand. And these, these lighters, I mean, the, even this brand start at around two or three thousand mm. dollars. But I'll be there in a high-end restaurant in, let's say, Vienna, where you know, we're on a roof terrace, smoking's loud, and I'll hear yeah. from the other side, I'll be like, someone's lighting a cigar with a DuPont. Yeah. Who is that guy? So the sound is actually a status symbol if you're a cigar smoker and you know that. But no, nothing can really justify buying it apart from the fact that fifty-five thousand to me is the same as 50 bucks to most people. So why not have a nice lighter that I like? Yeah, I like it. I think it's beautiful. It's a work of art. Yes. Why not have it? I'm going to put this there because I think the smoke's going to come in. <clears throat> All right. I like the sales pitch though. It worked, didn't it? Did it work? Yeah, it definitely worked. The cigar was smoother as well. The cigar it? was smoother as I told well. told it was. It's just yeah. unfortunate I got a sore throat, so I can't even yeah. barely speak properly. No one's ever put me on the spot and told me to sell them anything. But well, there I, you go. I mean, There's I, a first I, for everything. Jesus, but I've, I've still got the skills there. You could tell I've worked in sales for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and in the end, move is called the takeaway. Well, it's no problem. You know, I don't need to sell this. Mm.